Theater presents... Oh, 
Oh, come in, Mr. Stearns, come in. Uh, sit down, Mr. Stearns, make yourself comfortable. What have you done with my wife? Oh, she's safe and comfortable. There's nothing for you to worry about, I assure you. Uh, what would you care for a drink? As a matter of fact, I could use one. If it isn't drugged. Drugged? That's a fanciful idea. It's no more fanciful than kidnapping me. Who are you? What's this all about? As to who I am, you can call me Mr. X. Oh, Mr. X. Come on, you can't be for real. How corny can you get? It's corny, I admit, but it's also safer. Infinitely safer than any name I might use. You see, X is an unknown quantity. As to what this is all about, well, oh, you drink. Thanks. What is this all about? Oh, come now, Mr. Stearns. Todd, if I may. You know what it's about. I'm afraid not. You're lying, of course, but... Well, no sense wasting valuable time fencing with each other, so I'll tell you. I represent a group that's in the business of selling top-secret information of one country to another. You're in the business of conveying top-secret information from this country to another. The reason you were kidnapped and brought here was because we want the top secret you were presently on your way to deliver to... <laughs> well, you know where. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking now, about. Now, let's not fence, please. I know that you are on your way abroad with the formula for a new bacterial gas, which would easily tip the balance of power in favor of a country possessing it. Oh, and my government is willing to uh, hand over a weapon as vital and deadly as this to another government? It is, and you know why. The pact between the two governments to keep each other informed and thus hopefully to maintain the balance of power. <laughs> you know, you've been seeing too many James Bond movies. Now stop it, Todd. I, I, I want the formula and I mean to have it. Well, you won't get it from me because I haven't got it. As I guess you know, your muscle men searched me thoroughly and found nothing. I didn't expect they would. I'd have been very surprised, indeed shocked, if you'd been carrying such a formula worth untold millions on your person instead of in your head. In my head? Precisely. Todd, I'm authorized to offer you $50,000 for the formula. For a formula you've just told me can be sold for untold millions? Oh, all right. How much do you want? It's an academic question, Mr. X, since I don't have the formula. Would you consider 100000 I haven't got the formula you're talking about. Uh, this is a tape recorder. I'm going to leave you here alone for 15 minutes. When I return, I hope you will have been sensible enough to record the formula for me. Look, I assure you... yourself to the liquor. And, of course, you won't try to escape. As you see, there are no windows and only one door. I... And please, please, no more nonsense about your not having the formula. You have it, Todd. You have it as surely as we have your wife. <laughs> Stearns, I see you've been made comfortable. What have you done with my husband? Where is now, he? Now, there's no need to distress yourself, Mrs. Stearns. Tammy, if I may. Uh, Todd is presently as safe and as comfortable as you are. Oh, I see that you're drinking tea. Would you like another cup? What is all this? Why were we brought here? Please. Now, calm Let's... yourself, I beg you. You're in no danger. My husband? Nor is he. He's perfectly safe and unharmed at the moment. At the moment? What do you mean by that? Well, nothing more nor less than what I said. Uh, but tell me... How much do you know about Todd's affairs? Affair? His work, his career, the duties he performs for our government. Nothing. Except he's an undersecretary. Well, in, in, in some department or other. I don't even know that. That seems rather hard to believe. Married four years and you don't even know what department he works for? No. You never bothered to ask? Well, yes. And? Todd made plain to me he wouldn't tell me and that I was not to ask. <laughs> you love Todd, of course. Of course. How much do you love him? I, I love him. I can't say more than that. Well, I think you can. I think you can say a good deal more than that. For instance, do you love him enough to suffer pain for him, a great deal of pain? What kind of question is that? Well, just answer it. Well? I can't answer it. How would I know how much pain I could stand until I was standing it? Hmm. Well, you have a point. It'd be interesting, though, wouldn't it, to find out how much you do love Todd, how much pain you could endure. I, I don't know why you're threatening me. Threatening you, Tammy? No, no, not at all. Our discussion is purely theoretical, at least at this time. At least at this time? For the present? Well, you're threatening me even now. You're, you're torturing at me by, by hinting at... I, I don't know what. Well, let's hope there'll be no need for you to find out. 
Uh, come in now, Miss C. Thank you. Uh, stay here with her. You know what to do with her if I send the signal. Do what? What are you going to do to me if he sends a signal? Well, answer me. Please. Please answer me. What? The tape is blank, Todd. You recorded nothing. There's nothing to record. Nothing. If there is a formula such as you speak of, I've never heard of it. Now, why don't you just knock off this nonsense and let me and my wife get out of here? Simply because there is a formula and you carry it in your head and you are going to dictate it into this machine before I'm through with you. And your wife. Tammy has nothing to do with this, hasn't she? She has only the vaguest idea of what I do at the department, if she has any idea at all. Even if I had memorized a formula, which I haven't, I'd never have told her about it. And why not? Why not? Because your work is precisely what I say it is, top secret, high security. Uh, no. Then why wouldn't you tell her? You love her, don't you? Of course. Then surely you trust her. Certainly I trust her. But not enough to let her know what you do? Oh, you underrate her, Todd. You really do. That woman would do anything for you. Suffer untold pain for you. What do you mean by that? Suffer untold pain for me. Well, nothing really. She told me she would, that's all. Oh, what amounted to the same thing. It just it happened to come up in our talk together. When did you talk? Only a few moments ago. I went to see her when I left you. I had a very nice chat with a very interesting and informative chat. About how much pain she could stand? Well, that was only a small part of what we talked about. Now listen to me. She knows nothing. Of course she doesn't. How could she? There's nothing to know, you say. You harm her. And I warn you, Mr. X, or whatever you are, I warn Todd, you... Todd, stop acting like a fool. Now, you know that you're helpless, and so is she. You also know that in one way or another, you're going to give me that formula, so... Why not give it to me and save us all a lot of trouble, all three of us? Three of us. You, me, and Tammy. Now, here's the tape recorder. Begin. Very well. Come along with me, Todd. Where to? The cellar. There's something there I want to show you. Something I'm sure will change your mind. you have 
You are Todd Stearns or Tammy Stearns. What would be your answer? What would you do? Think about it until I return for Act Two. I know that too. 
you're involved now. This character X could torture me to death, and... Well, I don't think I'd break. I don't think I would, but... You can't tell till you're going through it. I've known agents who... Well, never mind. To face torture myself alone, that's one thing. But to watch you face it... Sammy, I couldn't bear that. Why are you looking at me like that? You're going to have to bear it, Todd. You can't risk the lives of millions for, for one person, no matter how much you love her. But that's the point I wanted to make. If I give X the form... Todd, you're not going to. It doesn't mean that whoever buys it will use it to control the world. It could simply mean they would have a balance of power with us. Instead of the government... Whichever it is, you won't tell me, that already has a pact with us? Sweetheart, I am just a courier. I'm not up there with the brass. A pact, well, it's supposed to mean what you think it means, but well, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think all it means is that both countries have the same amount of clout and can't rip each other off. How do we get into this? Because this is what it's all about. No. What it's all about is you. You getting tortured is what it's about. Tammy, X is going to make me watch you on that slab as the pendulum comes closer, inch by inch. Darling, I won't be able to bear it. I think you will. I know you will. You're a lot shorter than I am. Oh, dear, what a pity. The champagne, the food, you touched nothing. Who is he? Uh, oh, a little quirk of mine. He fits in, don't you think? The black suit, the red hood with slits for eyes. Just right for an execution. Huh? Just right to scare the daylights out of your victims. Exactly. Tammy, are you scared? You better know it. But you needn't be, you know. Not if you have succeeded where I failed. What is Todd's answer now? You better ask Todd that. Todd? No. My answer is still no. What? point in it to undergo agony only to give in finally. If one gives in. You think you won't? But you seem to forget. Todd's the one who has to give in. I don't have the formula. If, if there is one. Think now, Tammy. Think. You're lying strapped to that slab. That slab beneath the pendulum. You cannot move. Scarcely a muscle moves. You're looking up, staring at that great blade. It begins to move. by unaccountably. Suddenly, there it is. The blade within an inches of you now, within an inch. Cutting now, cutting through your dress. Delicately cutting. And now, now on the next swing, it is going to slice. Stop it! Stop it! Tammy, I can't let you I do this. I didn't think that you could. Bring the tape recorder. Don't bother! No? Tammy! Todd, this man is a phony. I'll stake my life on it. You're trying to scare Todd into giving you the secret formula. But if you're scared, Fizzle... I won't you... go through with this thing. I won't, hmm? Well, I... I don't think you will. In that case, finish your champagne and we'll proceed. Todd, one final chance. Mr. X, this is... It's senseless. Makes plenty of sense to me. It would if I were in your shoes. That woman, that lovely, exceptional woman you were lucky enough to marry, lies strapped to the slab. When I give the nod to our red-hooded executioner, he'll press the button that starts the pendulum. Once started, it can't be stopped. Can't? It, no. It goes right on, down, and through. Should you change your mind, it had better not be at the last moment. It had better be in time for the executioner to pull her out from under the blade. Tammy! Don't give in, Doc. Don't! You leave me no choice, Simon. Do it! Damn it! Damn you! Go on and do it! Very well. I give the nod. Um, 
microphone to the tape recorder. Take it. Use it. Tell the formula. What is he saying to you? What? What is that he's saying to you? A microphone? Yes. The mic is the tape recorder. Oh, don't, don't. You'll die if I don't. You'll die. You'll die. Me, the whole world. I can't let you. I can't let you. If you can't let her speak, you got the mic in your hand, start talking. No. What's left if I do? What's left? What? She loves me. If I let her down, if I save her life and lose a million others, she'll hate me. What'll be left to me then? There are other women. You, Sophie. There are no other women. There's only Tammy for me. Oh, my dearest, you are right. We, we've got to go through with this. For them. I've met fools in my time, but you, it's within inches, three at most from her body. Not two. One. Cutting the dress now. You see? And the next cut. Talk, you can Full talk, fast. The bacterial equation. Oh, God. It's no. What is it? The equation before it's too late. What? What indeed? A man and a woman. Just another man and woman like you, like me. Stand ready to sacrifice, or not sacrifice, their own lives for others. Certainly the woman does. The man? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when I return for Act Three. It's Athletes versus Events. We're at Lime Rock Auto Track in Connecticut. Meet Ron Gagne. I used to race cars, but it takes a lot of coordination and quick response. I had it until MS, multiple sclerosis, attacked my central nervous system. With Ron Gagne, Paul Newman, actor and fellow race driver, and his racing teammate, Terry Knight. My teammate, Terry, and I race against the clock, just like Ron here. We want to beat multiple sclerosis before it beats him. You see, multiple sclerosis doesn't just cripple. So we all have to find a cure before it's too late. Help us get Ron back on the road to good health. Send a check to the MS Society. When you help, we all win. This message has been brought to you by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, 205 East 42nd Street, New York City, 10017. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time. We've got more time for you. At Northwest Federal, that means more hours, more convenience, and more gifts for savers. Right now, you can choose from 23 fabulous gifts just for saving at Northwest Federal. You'll find a terrific selection from a West Bend skillet to a Sunbeam clock, from an Oster blender to a Black & Decker sander. There are summer fun items, too, like the colorful Beach Bum lounging quilt or the comfy Coleman sleeping bag. Come on in to any Northwest Federal, including their new Skokie Savings Center, to choose your gift. One gift for family free or at greatly reduced prices when you deposit $250 or more. But hurry, offer good for limited time only. Come see the selection. It's just one more example of how Northwest Federal does more for you. of torture, limitless degrees of mental and physical torment. And of these, mental anguish is worst of all. There are some who can stand physical pain better than mental, and vice versa. Moments ago, we wondered, would Todd Stearns break under the strain of watching the torment of his wife, Tammy? Would Tammy? Well, let's find out. Todd. Todd. What? You fainted. <laughs> Tammy. I remember now. The pendulum. The blade descending closer and closer, cutting through a dress. Is she... Is she what? Dead. Damn you, is she dead? The tape recorder is right there in front of you. Dictate the formula. Answer me. Is Tammy dead? Dictate the formula. No. You will, if you want. 
want the answer to whether your wife is dead or alive? Oh, no. If she's dead, then at least she's safe from you. Ah, but if she's alive... I see it in your eyes, the agony of not knowing. Dictate. No. You've got more guts than I thought. Oh, no. I'm as much a coward as the next man. But you made a mistake. When you left Tammy and me alone together for those few hours. Oh? That's a funny thing, but... I don't know why. Maybe it was just facing our last hours on Earth together, but we really got to know each other for the first time in our four years of marriage. I made a mistake? You made a mistake. You're licked. Dead or alive, Tammy licked you, and dead or alive, I won't let her down. I see. Excuse me. I'll bring her in. Tammy. Oh, Tammy, thank you. God, you're alive. Oh, darling, oh, darling. Are you all right? Oh, you are wrong. Oh, you're all right. No, I'm fine. I'm, 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 I'm fine. No, you're not. Your hands. I can feel your hands. No, I, They're shaking. I, I, I'll calm down, then I'll be all right. Not if Todd goes on refusing to give me that formula. Ben, you haven't given it to him? No. Oh, I'm so glad, darling. I'm so glad. Your happiness is doomed to a short <laughs> life. Because I assure you, Todd is going to do what I am. No, not Todd. Oh, yes. Oh, let me say that I, I admire you, both of you. And you have every reason to be proud of this man you married. Well, I am very. But he is not a superman. He has his breaking point, as all men do. I haven't succeeded in reaching that point, that's all. But unless he dictates the formula he carries in his head, I shall take final steps to reach his breaking point and yours quickly. Oh, by the way... Uh, your little girl, Jill. What about her? I thought you want to know. Uh, your housekeeper, Anna, sent for the doctor a little while ago. Why? Is she worse? I, I don't know. All I have is the report that the doctor was sent for. You dirty what? Now, slowly. Slowly, Todd. Physical violence will get you nowhere. This is part of your next torture, isn't it? Making us worry about Jill's condition. And what will become of her should the two of you meet what you possibly may meet? Death. You leave me no choice but to subject you now to the kind of torment I tried to avoid. Well, there can't be anything worse than the pendulum. There's the pit. I see that you know something about it. I don't know anything about it. Precisely, you heard of the pit, but it remains an unknown quantity. And it will be that, the simple fact that you don't know what awaits you in the pit, that will break you. Just as not knowing why the doctor was called for your daughter has shaken you. Now, once again, will you give me the formula? Then it's the pit, I'm afraid. Back where we started? I don't know. The pendulum, you see, is again in place in the ceiling. I will leave you alone now with just the pit. Oh, and, uh, Todd, when you decide that you can't take any more and agree to give me the formula, just say so. You'll be heard. Oh, I hope Jill's all right. Don't worry, she is. There's no better doctor than Dr. Lynch. Yes, but if the cold's going into her chest, you know, her chest is weak. Don't worry, could... it's just what that louse wants. For all we know, he could be lying. Anna never sent for the doctor. Oh, you're right. I'm doing just what X wants me to do. I'm worrying myself sick. What are you looking for? Something to drop down the pit. Well, what for? Find out how deep it is. Whether the bottom is solid or filled with water. The room's as bare as a bone, though. Here. Oh, your shoe? <laughs> you can buy me another pair when we get out of here. <laughs> I'll buy you a dozen pair. Okay. Here it goes. Funny. I didn't hear a sound. Not a sound. No splash? No thud of the shoe hitting anything? Nothing. A damn thing can't be bottomless. It's either that or awfully, awfully deep. That's for sure. Give me your other shoe. Try again? Yes. The first sound could have been so slight we didn't pick it up. Yes. This time, listen carefully. Very carefully. Ready? Go ahead. Nothing. 
could stand back. I don't like being so near the edge. I don't blame you. The thought of phoning in. No. Sorry. It's all right. I feel the same way. Let's sit down on the floor. Against the wall. All right. Yes, that's better. Todd? Hmm? The wall feels warm. Hmm, it's a little too warm. Just, uh, move away a bit. Hannah? Much. I'm sure Jill's going to be all right. I'm just not going to worry about her. No. Todd, that wolf getting hotter. Well, we'll have to move away from it a little more. And closer to the pit. Wait a minute now. You don't think... Here, let me just see how... Todd! Burn my hand. The water's as hot as an oven. Move over to that one. Well, this one's as hot as the other. It's getting hotter. So that's it. Don't you see? The hotter the walls get, the farther we have to get from them. And the closer to the pit. Until we... Yeah. Until. Are you all right? But darling, see the ice. And I... We're... Moving closer to the pit. Can help us? Heat from the walls. Getting worse. Oh, God, hold me. Put your arms around me. Sweetheart. <laughs> what is down there? We go over the edge. Oh, God, this is less than two feet away now. When we go over, what will happen to us? What? Death, I guess. How? How will we die? Try not to move any closer. Try. Help me. Help me. The heat unbearable. You're moving closer to the edge, too. I can't help it either. Hold me. Hold me. Wait up. I guess we... Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. It doesn't seem so hot. Not so. I think you're right. It's cooler. I can't bear it anymore. I can't bear it. You don't have to bear anymore now, sweetheart. 
me? No. Todd? What I want is an explanation of all this, and you better make it a good one, Mr. What is your name? X will do. Yeah, but now we know it was all a, a test or a game or whatever it was. I must still keep my cover. <laughs> Look, I don't blame you for being angry. Simply put, we subjected you to a test to see how much you could take before you broke down. All operatives, couriers, are put through the ringer. I never was before. I never even heard of it before. Never would have if you hadn't reached that point in your career where we felt that you were ready. The formula you so painstakingly memorized, Todd, is worthless. There's no such thing as that bacterial weapon. Oh, no. But if there were, and you were caught by the kind of group I pretended to represent, we had to be sure that you'd never break, never reveal it. Risk blowing my mind. Tammy. No, no, no. You were never in any danger of that. From start to finish, you were carefully monitored by staff psychiatrists. They'd have known instantly if you were in any serious difficulty. Well, I... I guess you'll have to do it. Yes, we do. Tell me something. What... What did we fall on? I mean, when I went over, holding Tammy in my arms. <laughs> Special foam rubber. Dozens of layers of the stuff. You could have dropped an iron safe down that hole, much less Tammy's shoes, and you'd have heard nothing. Now well, then, it's over. You can relax and unwind What's more, Todd, you have gained something that you didn't have before. You've learned how much you can take. And, mister, you can take it. I learned something a lot more important than that, if you ask me. What would that be, Todd? I learned... Tammy, I always thought you were pretty wonderful, but you're more than that. You're the most wonderful woman and wife in the world. is stranger than fiction. And if you feel the story I've just brought you is one of the strangest you've ever heard, I can only assure you that even stranger things go on in this world of ours. Stranger and, yes, more terrifying. Let's hope you never find yourself involved with any of them. Beyond your radio, that is. I'll be back shortly. Here's a message from your Kidney Foundation. Have you ever stood in line, my friend? Not for hours, but for years on end. Not waiting for a ticket for a show you want to see. But just for the chance to live life normally. Waiting for the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Give the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on.